Hey everybody, so uh, in my last video I introduced you to the 50mm uh, Stanley solid body padlock with the removable uh, and recable core. Uh, today we're going to take a look at its bigger brother. This guy is 60mm and instead of a solid body, this is uh, laminated steel plates. Kind of like uh, you know the classic master locks that you're uh, so familiar with. Hopefully familiar with. Uh, nice big thick shackle. This one doesn't have a shroud, but they do have a variant that does have the shrouding comes up to here. You know, sort of ears. Um, <clears throat> again, it is a Schlage C keyway with this spinning anti-drill plate. Here's the key. On this one, the bidding is even nastier than before. You can see the direct code right there. Uh, but, you know, still, you can see we've got some very uh, high-low changes, both just from the bidding and from looking at the code. So, uh, let's see if we can get this thing open. Now we're going to start with the uh, thick Peterson pry bar, the original. And we're going to use the long end to get in there. And uh, standard thickness short hook. Because, you know, I just... I'm very comfortable with that, and there's a lot you can do with a short hook. So we're just going to reach around, try to find something that's going to give us some uh, feedback, some resistance there. Everything's feeling pretty bouncy. Um, I think this is pin four. Got a little click out of it. Number three feels like it's binding a bit. No. Nope. Okay. Okay, I think we just set three and four. Number two is very solid in there. Uh, so I think we've got number five binding now. A little bit of a click from that. Number six feels like it's binding. Maybe not. Let's try from the front again. Number one is still very springy. Number two is very tight. Uh, just bounce number six around a bit. Okay, we'll click from that. Good. So far, so good. Back to one. We're finally getting some binding on one. A couple clicks there. Two moved a little bit. Number three, again. And just we're going to just keep going back and forth, because at this point we've got a bit of a false set going. So we're just going to go around, back and forth, pin by pin, and just try to give them a little bit of a bounce, and see if we get any sort of counter-rotation. Any sort of movement here. A little something from... oh, there we go and open. So, if you remember from last time, uh, you can't just stick a screwdriver down the uh, toe hole of the shackle. Uh, we've got to get some of these metric hex wrenches out, and I think this one takes a 2.5 millimeter. There we go. And we're going to remove this retaining pin so that we can access the shackle or remove the shackle, really. Almost there. There we go. And... I'm gonna just give it a little bit of a twist. There we go. And now we need the thick one, because down behind this spring, all the way at the bottom, is another hex bolt. There we go. And as I undo it, you can see the faceplate slowly dropping and the retaining screw coming off. Almost there. There we go. Oh, and the core is dropping out right with it. I'll put the body aside for now. Uh, this little alignment plate is fine. It's there to make sure that the piece lines up properly and oh good we've already got a knee unlock position so 
uh, our castle nut tool isn't going to fit in there, so we've got to use a pick or a screwdriver to hold that retaining pin out of the way. We're going to remove the castle nut, the tail piece, and we're going to drop the retaining pin and its spring out. Uh, we're going to make sure that we've got it in the unlocked position and that we align these tabs with the driver chambers in the body. There we go. Okay. So, put that guy aside for a moment. And let's see what we've got in here. So, uh, one thing that I didn't notice when I was doing the last video, well, there we go, is there's actually a bit of counter milling on each of the chamber mounts in the plug. And uh, I'll show you why that's important in a second. But uh, here we go. Pin one, standard. Pin two, standard. Three, standard. Four, five, six. All standard. Look like they might be uh, nickel plated or something similar. So very nice. Gives it a good. Uh, keeps it moving. Uh, smoothly. And now let's see what's in the driver chambers. Chamber one is looks like a, one of those double spools that we saw last time. Chamber two looks like a standard. Chamber three also looks like a standard. Uh, chamber four uh, that's that little anti-bump pin with the milling at the uh, ends. Number five, also standard, and number six is another double spool. So, let's give you a good angle on that. So you can see, uh, here's the double spool pin. Don't want to lose that spring. So there you go. Uh, those are pretty deep channels, so they're a lot deeper and more widely spaced than a regular serrated pin would be. So they're more like a double spool, in my opinion. And then we've got that anti bump pin where the tips are just milled very slightly, uh, but it's also fitted with a uh, looks like a steel spring to give it even more pressure and so that's to prevent someone from using a bump key in your lock. So all around uh, not exactly what I would call an easy pick and uh, very solidly made. So until next time uh, have fun and happy picking.